we're glad you're here today. I'm going to jump right in the middle of this because i got a long way to travel. And then we're so excited for everybody that's watching online today. And if it's laundry day and you're in your Longhorn pajamas at home, we'll pray that you get your Texas Tech ones clean. So um, <laughs> if you've got your Bibles, go with me to Psalms 23. And we started a new series last week called The Good Shepherd. And we're talking about the Lord truly being our shepherd. And we're also talking about toxic emotions that we deal with. And this, special, this message today, we're going to talk about God being our present shepherd. And, and I just want to talk about the presence of God in our lives and the difference it should make. I want you to hear me on that. When God is the Lord of your life, it should make a huge difference in your life. Let me stop and take a break and say, hey, if you're driving a gray F-150 and you haven't moved that, if you could move that for us, that's the only thing. We can't be parked in that driveway over there wherever you parked. And just, just wait about 30 seconds so everybody thinks you're going to the bathroom, but I, nobody knows who you are. And then when you walk out, I'll go, there, that's the guy right there. I'm just playing. So, um, but this message, we want to talk a lot about stress and anxiety today. And here's what it says in Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Did you hear that? I shall not want. We talked about that last week. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters, and he restores my soul. Now, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters, and he restores my soul. Let's talk about stress and anxiety just for a minute. These are two emotions that we all feel from time to time. But what's happening is, is they're becoming more and more common and more and more problematic in our society today, even among Christians. And, and let me give you some definitions of what stress and anxiety is so you can know. Stress is the state of, of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. Did, did you know that your body cannot tell the difference between good stress and, and bad stress. And, and what I mean by that, if, if you're under stress about planning a wedding and you're all excited about that's good stress, but your body can't tell the difference between what's good and, and what's bad. And it's dangerous for you long term to stress over your finances or something that bad that's happening in your life. Our bodies can't tell the difference, but we were not designed. I want you to hear me. You were not designed to live under stress, but we can have short seasons of it. But if it's long time, we're going to have problems in every area. Now, here's what anxiety is. Anxiety, again, this is the dictionary definition, a feel of worrying, nervousness, or unease, typically because of an imminent event or something that has an uncertain outcome. Now, if you're a type A personality or you're a uh, control freak, <laughs> you're going to struggle real bad with anxiety. But let me say this, Sh control's just an illusion. Nobody's really in control of anything. You just, like if you're driving, you feel like you're in control, but you're not in control of the other people driving on the road. Right. So you never know what they're going to do. So control's just an illusion. Stress is pressure. I, I just feel pressure to do something that I don't feel like I can do. But anxiety is this, man, I'm just overwhelmed. I, I feel inadequate. I don't have the ability to do this thing. So I just have this worry or this sense of nervousness. But both of these situations are dangerous. And did you know this? This blew my mind when I was studying for this message. 70% of all doctor office visits are because of stress-related illness, illnesses. 70%. And, and our bodies just can't handle stress. So we're internalizing and ultimately it becomes a physical disorder. And, and I'm saying this to everybody. You, sometimes you can break out in shingles. You get skin issues. You, you can get uh, autoimmune problems. You can get digestive problems. You get ulcers. You get all kinds of things that we have to go back to the root issue. And that is in many cases, we're just not living the way that God intended for us to live. And, and so we're having all these health problems and, and, and issues because we can't deal with stress and we can't deal with anxiety and we weren't designed. I want you to hear this. You were not designed to deal with those things. Depression and anxiety disorders are at an all-time high. And, and I don't, why don't you feel bad about this? I know several people that take medicine for this. My goal is not to beat you up. My goal is to bring some freedom to your life. Would it be okay if we left this place better than the way we came? Amen. And, and so... Americans are more addicted to prescription drugs than ever before, and a lot of it has to do with anxiety and de disorders and depression. But I want you to hear me. If your doctor puts you on some kind of medicine, take your medicine. 
God gave us doctors for a reason. And don't take yourself off your medicine <laughs> until you're sane again. Because <laughs> now everybody in the house is going to have to be on medicine. Right? We're going to be all over there popping like, why? like Pez. <laughs> Are y'all, y'all young? Y'all, am I so old y'all don't know what Pez is? <sighs> I'm finna be 50. I guess I'm finna be old. But anyway, this message that I'm bringing this morning, I, I believe can set many people free from anxiety and disorders and depression of that such. Because there's a cure and that cure is with us this morning. Did you know that? That cure is here in this morning. But without Jesus, we're going to live with physical problems, mental problems, emotional problems, relational problems, marriage issues. We're going to deal with anger and all kinds of things that come out because we're living under chronic stress and anxiety. And the root of that is spiritual. It's not physical. It's a spiritual thing. And, and, and both are caused by us trying to be our own shepherd. It's all caused by us trying to navigate our own life. It's a spiritual issue, and God wants to be in the middle of that. And and, and I just want to say this. There are two realities that that, that we're going to come to terms with before we can be set from free from the things and live the way God wants us to live. And here's the first one. You ready? We're just sheep. We are just sheep. If you missed last week, you need to go listen to it on YouTube or TWCLubbock.com. But we, we are very weak, and we cannot do life on our, long, on our own. And Psalms 23 begins with the confession. This is David, and he said, the Lord is my shepherd. And when David makes that confession, what he's saying is, I'm just a sheep, and I'm okay with being a sheep. Sheep, this may offend some of you, but here's the truth. Sheep are some of the dumbest animals in the whole world. And I said it last week, and I even used it. There, there's some stupid animals. And, and sheep are stupid. And, and Pastor Todd, are you saying the Lord sees me as sheep? Yes. <laughs> so are you saying the Lord sees me as stupid? Sometimes. <laughs> right? Let's just be real. Sometimes. And so let me say this. Compared to him, we are. Compared to him, we are. And he did not recruit anybody in this room. I'm going to bust somebody's bubble. He did not recruit anybody in this room because of your brains. He, he, have you ever, think about this, have you ever been in the middle of your prayer time and the Lord said, hey, could I get your advice on some things? <laughs> I've, I've, I've got some end time problems going on and, and, and what do you think about the Palestinians and the Israel and what, how do you feel about, God's never asked me for help. He's never asked me for advice and, and, and I'm as intelligent as he wants me to be, but listen, Watch this. This may offend you. God has us mentally disabled to where we cannot navigate our life on our own. You were made to have a shepherd. You were made to have someone lead you and to guide you because God knew you couldn't do it yourself. And if you did it yourself, you would end up in the positions that most of us were in before we came to Jesus. I didn't come to Jesus because my life was great. I came to Jesus because I was a drug addict. Right? Where would you come to Jesus? I was a drug addict. Oh, well, that's not good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So that's why I came to Jesus. I needed some help. I was trying to navigate my own life, and it led me to drugs. I was not prepared to do it. And there's many of you that have another testimony just like that. Don't act like uh, you soaped up and scoped up. And some of you used to be doped up. You know who I'm talking to. Don't be pointing fingers, though. This is not testimony time. People are like, I'm sitting next to my dealer right now. Anyway, so. <laughs> we don't have the understanding, and we don't have the wisdom, and we don't have the answers. And here's something. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with God navigating my life. We're just sheep and we need a shepherd. Here's the second reality. God's always going to be there. He is always there. He is always present in our life. And if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, do you realize that God's with you whether you like it or not and whether you recognize it or not? And here's what David says in the 23rd Psalm. These are the statements that he's making about the benefits of Jesus being his shepherd. He said, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Now, let me tell you something about your concept of God. It took me years to learn how to trust God. Because I grew up in a church that you went to hell if you wore a pair of shorts. I grew up in a church, if you, you go to hell if you go to the movies. You go to hell if, if you go swimming with girls. It's called mixed bathing, bless God. And you're going to go to hell over there for mixed bathing and all that. And there was never a bar of soap at the swimming pool. So I don't know what any of that even meant. But you went to hell for everything. And I'm like, bro, I got a whole lot worse issues than just chewing some gum and wearing some shorts. Like, I'm fornicating with my girlfriend. I'm getting stoned as still as I get out of church. I get drunk before I come to church. I, I got some issues. And you telling me I'm going to hell for some shorts? Whew. 
y'all really need to lay hands on me. Because if you knew who I was, my daddy would not be a deacon and my mom could not be a youth pastor. I'm just telling y'all that right now. But, but I, I, they made me feel like God was just up there in heaven just throwing lightning bolts every time I messed up and every time I screwed up. All he, he was excited that I messed up. And that's just a lie. That's just a lie from the pit of hell. And, and if you don't have a concept where you trust God, you'll start trying to navigate your own life. And, and because your concept of God is messed up. Here's the statement that has set me free in my life of my concept of God. That God wants to bless you more than you ever want to bless yourself. And God loves you more than you could ever possibly love yourself. And once I understood that, that changed everything for me. He wasn't an angry, mad God. He was somebody that was totally in love with me. So he gave his son Jesus so I didn't have to live independent from him. It's amazing to me. And if you trust him, you end up in the promised land. And this is a challenge for many people in this room because we actually think we can bless ourselves more than God could bless me. And some of us think we can love ourselves more than God loves me. No, I promise you, if you follow Jesus, you will be lying down and resting in a promised land. And David said, he leads me, he makes me lie down in lush green pastures and wonderful blessing and abundance. It's our concept of God that keeps us from walking out what God has promised us. Are you hearing me? If you don't think that, you... You can't live any better than you think. And if you got stinking thinking, it'll keep you trapped because God hasn't called you to be a human doing. He, you're called a human being. And some of you are messed up because you think what you've done is who you are. And God said, no, what you've done is not who you are. Who you are is who I say you are. And if I called you to preach, then you're called to preach. I don't care if you've been locked up for 15, 25 years. I don't care if you're on your third or fourth marriage. I don't care if you had an abortion. I don't care what you've done. What you've done is not who you are. Who you are is a son and a daughter of the king. I need to get this. You've got to get out of your own head this morning. But if you don't believe that God knows you and loves you and cares about you, then, of course, you're not going to trust him. And you're not going to believe anything I say because you're thinking to yourself, I would rather trust me because I have my best interest in mind. Did you know that God wants to bless you with everything you want to be blessed with? If you want a house, God wants to bless you with a house. But people have this concept, well, then I need a $20 million house. No, I didn't say you're going to get a $20 million house. I said you're going to have a house. Maybe an apartment. Well, I need a ride. Well, they may put a bus stop out in front of your house. Y'all not ready for me. See, you're so, you so fixed on getting an $80,000 Corvette, you're going to miss the fact that God gave you a bicycle with two good tires. Sometimes black, look, everybody else got COVID, but you didn't get COVID. You're not hearing what I'm telling you. Everybody else is sick, and you're not sick. Why? You're blood bought and covered, and God's redeemed you, and he's got a plan for you. Those are blessings. Those are blessings over your life. Catch me, man. Everybody else at the daycare got strep throat, but your kid didn't get strep throat. You didn't have to miss a day of work. It wasn't because your body was so well. It's because God healed you, restored you, and allowed you to do what you do. Everything you got is all because of him. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Hallelujah. Whew, I feel like preaching. I hope you feel like listening. Oh, we're going to get some place today. You're going to rowdy. We got all the people that get, got home from the club here today. So... God wants to bless you with every spiritual blessing. He wants, to have, he wants you to have health. He wants you to have blessing in every your life. You know why? Because he's the good shepherd. He's the good shepherd. And, and what kind of mean shepherd would want to lead sheep to a place they don't want to be? Huh? Listen to me. Or, or a place that's not good for him. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And for me to get to those green pastures and be able to lie down, first of all, I've got to be willing to follow him. And, and i got to follow Jesus. Jesus says in John 10, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So this is how you know if you're a sheep or a goat. First off, you hear his voice, you understand, and you follow him. You with me? And, and, and we have to learn to do this, and it doesn't take a lot of Christian maturity to do this. Listen, some people think, well, you got to be 10 years old or 20 years old in Christ, in Christ and 30 years old in Christ before you can hear him. I want to tell you something. The first week I got saved, I began to hear God say certain things to me. The very first week I got saved, and you say, well, how did you hear it? Did he say it out loud? No, dear God, I'd have died. If he did, God, whoa. I just, I just felt it in my heart. I just heard it in my heart, and I'm saying you don't have to be mature in, in Christ to hear God speak to you. But if you say, well, God's not speaking to me. Well, then maybe you're not a sheep. Well, that hurts my feelings. Well, okay, I'm sorry about your feelings. Sometimes i got to get walked on. 
If he says that my sheep hear my voice and they follow me, if you're not hearing him, it means you're not a sheep. Because it doesn't take you 10 years. I'm telling you, the first week I got saved, God began to speak to me. That means, listen, the little sheep, the big sheep, the old sheep, and the young sheep are his sheep, right? So if he's speaking and he's an ordinary talking God and he spoke everything into existence, then it's got to be on my end that's short-ended. Come on. Y'all were shouting with me a while ago. Now y'all died off on me. I'm like, I don't know. He, you just called me a goat. I don't know. And, but we got to wake up every single morning and read our Bibles and pray, say, God, lead me where you want me to go this day. Put me in front of who you want me to be in front of today so I can be used by you. And, and God will always speak to us. Watch this. God will always, how do you know it's God? He will always speak to me in a manner that's consistent with his word. God is never going to say anything that's inconsistent with his word. And that gets a lot of people, well, I feel like the Lord told me and my girlfriend to live together. No, I He did not. And if some of y'all living together, now you're mad. I'm not trying to make you mad, but don't go around saying God said. Say something else said. You'll catch me on the way home. You'll catch me on the way home. That's why we got kids, church, and youth. We got adult problems in here. Well, I, Pastor, I've been praying about tithing, and I feel like the Lord told me to give 5%. No, 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 because the word tithe means 10. Not only you lying on God, you don't know how to wear tithe. <laughs> Are you tracking with me? But we say some foolish things, don't we? God told me that. God didn't tell you that. You told you that. But you'll put God's word. And there's even preachers that go, well, the Lord said this, the Lord. Watch out, man. If it ain't backed up by this book, don't be listening to that preacher. There's preachers, they'll say it to make themselves sound spiritual. God said, well, let me find it in the Bible. Show me in the Bible where God said that before. Because if he said it before, I'm on track. But if you're saying something that's not in this word, you're scared. Him. You're a false prophet. Right. Hear me now. Just because you said God said don't mean God said. That might have been Earl down at the gas station. And you know Earl ain't right. Huh? Track with me. So God's never going to speak outside of his word. And many times what God is going to speak, he's going to speak through his word when you're reading. And, and the Psalms is a very rich book. Many times in my life when I'm going through a difficult time, I read the book of Psalms. And, and God says something to me that completely changes my perspective and causes me to do things and go to a certain direction that I wouldn't go before. Let me say this. Day by day, little by little, taking a step at a time, you will end up in the pasture of your promised land if you trust him long enough. And we have to follow Jesus. And he said, my sheep hear my voice. Now, that's a promise. That's a promise that you'll hear his voice. You can hear God. I want you to hear me real closely. You can hear God. You don't have to call the preacher on TBN to hear God for you. You don't got to call me to hear God for you. God doesn't love me more than he loves you. I want you to hear me. If you are Christian, you can hear the voice of God. And trust it. Trust the voice of God. Listen, I want you to be inspired by that because sometimes you think, well, what if it's not God? What if it's me? Go to his word. That's the best way to, don't call your friends. Your friends are as crazy as you are. <laughs> Go back to the word and see if it lines up with the word. That's how you'll know what the Lord, and you know what it does? It builds your faith because if you think you hear something crazy and you go to the word and you find it, you're like, oh man, I do hear God. I can hear God for myself. I don't have to go to my grandma or my mom or my dad. I can go to the Lord myself, and I can hear from his throne. That's good news. Man, if you believe that, give God a good shout of praise in here. He loves you, and he wants the best for your life. The second thing is even if, if you find your promised land and the blessing, it says he makes me lie down. Now, sheep are some of the most nervous animals in, in the world. And when you see a picture of sheep lying in a pasture, it's an unnatural state. Sheep do not lie down uh, naturally unless they're forced to or because of exhaustion, because they are very nervous, just like us. They are nervous about four things, and these are the four things that we're nervous about, if we'll just be honest. The first thing is this. They're nervous about predators and enemy, enemies, predators and enemies, because they have no natural defense mechanism. Their only ability to save themselves is the ability to run, and if they lie down, they have lost their ability to be able to run. And so a sheep isn't going to lie down naturally unless they feel like they're totally safe. Here's the second thing. Parasites. They get ticks and bugs underneath their skin and they cannot rest because of the ticks and the bugs. Here's the third thing. And this one's a big one. I want you to, we're called sheep, right? I want you to listen to what I'm saying. The third thing is other sheep. Sheep dominate each other. 
They have this, what is called the budding order, and, and they butt each other, and they abuse each other, and the little ones end up getting overwhelmed and overrun sometimes, and they starve to death because they cannot eat because the other ones butt them out of the pasture. Some of you are in this church this morning because you got butted out of the last church you were at. They mishandled you. They mistreated you. I, let's just be real. And they butted you out, people that should have known better. They weren't worried God forbid that we get to the place when somebody walks in here that looks like the world that we turn up our nose and forget where we came from. God forbid. God forbid that you've been saved for 28 years and somebody that hasn't known Jesus, don't know Jesus, comes in here smelling like a brewery looking for whatever. They come in here and you're turning. Listen, I would rather you come to my church drunk and sit on the front row and get the word sown in your heart than be passed out on your couch at the house. Why, Todd? It's not because of my preaching. It's because of the promise attached to the word that his word never returns void. And if you'll put yourself underneath a fountain, God will give you a word that will restore your soul. He can do it. Don't ever come in here and look at it. Mm, I can't believe you look like that. Who are you? You've been saved two weeks and now you're saint something. Don't forget where you come from, man. Or else, and when you get to where you're supposed to be, reach back and bring somebody with you. Oh, golly. Let me preach this thing. Woo, I'm, I'm, I'm fired up on this today, man. Here's the thing. The fourth thing, they worry about food. They're always worrying about food because they don't have the ability to navigate their own life, so they're worried about food. So listen, they're worried about predators. They're worried about parasites. Things under their skin. They're worried about other sheep and other sheep dominating and abusing them. And they're worried about feud. But you know something? When a shepherd walks up, a shepherd takes care of all the predators. A shepherd takes care of all the parasites. He'll sit there and he'll pick that sheep and he'll take the ticks off and he'll take the bugs off and he'll make that thing white as snow. Y'all not hearing what I'm telling you. He'll take what the devil meant from bad and turn it around and make it good. He'll take your mess and make it a mess and take your test and make it a testimony. Only God can clean you up that way. Only the blood of the lamb can redeem you. And he'll pick it apart because the shepherd knows the sheep and he's responsible for them. And not just for the big things, but God cares about the small things. A shepherd keeps ordering the flock and keeps the other sheep from abusing sheep. It's just like a parent or a boss or a pastor. Part of our main responsibility is to keep people from hurting each other so that there will be order and fairness. That's what a shepherd does. And a shepherd is responded for living sheep into a pasture and providing for them. Here's what I'm saying. If we're going to be able to lie down in green pastures, we have got to learn to follow and believe that God wants to bless us and he's got a perfect plan for our life. You have got to believe that this morning. But we also got to get to the point of saying, Jesus, every single day, I trust you to take care of the things that are threatening my life, the people that are against me, the circumstances that are against me. My fear of death, my fear of disease, my fear of COVID, my fear of terrorism, my fear of the unknown, my, my whatever it is that has threatened me today, Jesus, it's bigger than me, but it's not bigger than you. And I thank you that wherever I go, your rod and your staff bring me comfort. Amen. The rod of God is also designed not just to pull the sheep back in, but it's a club to hit the enemies over the head. David said to Saul, when the lion and the bear came to steal my father's sheep, I grabbed them by the beard and I slit their throat. Let me tell you something. If a lion and a bear came to steal my dad's sheep, they'd be having sheep for food that night. That's, that's, I'd be like, Dad, that's pretty much God's will. I mean, it's a lion and a bear. What did you want me to do? My dad would have whooped me too, but anyway. But Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd and I give my life for the sheep. Jesus will never ever give you up to an enemy as long as you trust him and you will never be able to rest in this life until you serve a Jesus who is bigger than your problems bigger than your situation parasites the little bitty things that bug you and get under your skin you not only have to believe that God has control of the big things you got to believe that God has control of everything I always know what I need to be praying about you know how it's because it's what I'm worried about whatever you're worried about is what you need to be praying about. And, and, and my prayer list is very simple to put together. If I, if I don't pray, I worry. 
And then I come before the Lord with every little thing in my life. And what I find out is not only that he can take care of the big things, he can take care of the little parasites that are bugging me, the demonic voices. Come on, those voices that tell you you're not who God called you to be. Watch this. You're not who you, God called you to be because you've done this and you've done that. That little demonic voice that comes in and say, you messed up. This is the seven, eight hundred time you've messed up this week and God can't redeem you. Listen, until Jesus comes back, God can still redeem you. I don't care where you've been or what you've done there's nobody in this room that's irredeemable you are redeemable and he comes in and he takes care of the little problems and the issue and he takes care of every people problem Ah! thank God for taking care of people problems because sometimes I just want to lay hands on them forget to pray y'all don't know nobody like that if y'all don't know nobody like that y'all might be somebody like that (laughs) every every single day we have to constantly go before God and forgive people and ask God for the grace to be able to deal with people. Because people ain't going to quit being stupid just because you're following Jesus. And there's going to be some people that you call friends and family that are going to hate on you worse because you started following Jesus. And again today, because there's a budding order among humans and, and, and there, there are dominant people, there are unkind people in this world. There are people that, that we love them and they won't return our love back. And you get so frustrated with people that you want to take matters in your own hands. Nobody here? Y'all are super Christians. That's awesome. But, but whenever we're in the flesh trying to deal with, with other people problems, it's always going to make things work and, and it never makes it better. God wants to give you provision, especially in the world that we live in right now. I want you to hear me because I know a lot of people have been affected by this COVID thing and this uh, finances are all over the place. Your job may be over the place. I want to tell you that God wants to provide for you. Constant anxiety about the future and what does the future hold and am I going to be okay? Let me just tell you this. As long as he is our shepherd, we are going to be okay because he has given us a promise. He will never leave us and he will never forsake us. He will never forsake us. He can take care of every issue in our life. Jesus said, pray every day. Watch this. Don't miss this. Pray how often? Every day. day. Give us our daily bread, and he will give us this day our daily bread because he cares about us. And and, and so I'm saying, if if we want to live this life that is protected from this devouring stress and anxiety, We have got to follow Jesus and trust him to lead us every day. And we've got to get to a place where every single day we go to him and say, God, I've got enemies and I've got predators spiritually, physically, and financially. But, Lord, I'm going to trust you no matter what my circumstances say. I am going to trust you. God, I've got these little issues eating at me, and I'm bringing them to you, and I pray that you would help me and that you would provide for me on, on people issues and provision every single day. Watch this. You can't do it once a month and expect it to be okay with your relationship with God. You can't just pray when you get in trouble. I'm not telling you he's not going to hear you. What I'm telling you is it's hard to build momentum when you only do something once a year. It's hard to do something when you only go to church once a month. We got crickets in here. It's hard to build momentum when you don't read and you don't pray. How can you go try that with your wife? Try to talk to your wife once a week. It ain't going to go down like you think. She's going to light your bed on fire <laughs> while you asleep and put a clothespin on your nose so you can't smell the smoke. It didn't work. If you go up to your wife once a week or once a month and try to tell her that you're in love with her and you have a relationship, but it's only once a month, how kind of a relationship do you got? If we wouldn't do that with our spouse, why would we do it with our Savior? Yeah. Amen. That's good. I'm, t- I'm telling you. It's that consistency. You cannot do it once a year when you're in trouble. See, every single day, he is ready. He loves us in spite of our faults and our problems, and and, and he's not down on us. And all he is waiting for us, like King David, to say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall, I will not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me to the green pastures, and then because he's my protector, and because he's my doctor, and because he's my provider, he's protecting me from other sheep, and he's providing for me. Not only can I get to the promised land, I can enjoy it along the 
way. But without him being my shepherd, there is no way in this world I'm going to be able to enjoy life. There is no way in this world I'm going to be able to live without constant stress and anxiety. But I want to give you some good news. When you live with Jesus as your shepherd, you live with peace that passes all understanding. And when everybody else is nervous and everybody else is angers, they look over you and they see you. And we're not perfect. Come on, we're not perfect. But we have peace in our life and blessing in our life. And that only comes because he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That's the difference. Let me say this another way. There will never be a day in your life that you get it all together. I'm going to come to the Lord when I get it all together. You, you never coming. You can't get it all together. There will never be a day in this world that we're going to come together and, and, and get it all together and, and get our peace. Never again in the history of the world will the world be okay. You know why? Because the end is coming. The Armageddon is coming. Jesus is coming back. And I don't know if he's coming tomorrow. I don't know if it's 100 years from now. But what I'm saying is this world is shaking and it's passing away. And if you want to find peace in this world, you are fresh, dead luck, out of luck. It's not going to happen. The only peace peace you're going to find is in the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the one that holds the whole world in his hand. He's the only one. Just write it off. You will not find peace here, but you will find it in him forever and every day. And there's one more statement that David makes that I want us to look at before I close. And that's this statement. He leads me beside the still waters. That's the Holy Spirit. You've got to have the Holy Spirit. This is talking about our deep soul needs being met that only God can meet. If you are looking for your spouse to meet your soul needs, you are setting your spouse up for failure. If you are looking for your boyfriend or your girlfriend to meet your soul needs, you are setting them up for failure. They cannot do what only God can provide. That's why he, no wonder they call him Savior. Amen. Sheep on their own are just very foolish animals. And one of the things they do, I don't know if you know this, but I studied as I put this message together, is sheep, if they're not led, they will drink from polluted ponds. Even if they are 100 yards away from a freshwater source, they don't know it because they haven't been led there. They're so foolish, rather than go 100 yards up the road to get clean water, they'll walk over to a pond that's full of parasites, manure, and dirt, and everything you can possibly imagine, and they will drink out of that source. And of course, the shepherd hates it because when they do that, they get parasite, and it causes them to lose weight. They get all kinds of sicknesses, but part of the responsibility of the shepherd is to lead the sheep to a pure source where they can drink and they can be nourished. Let me say this now and again. I'm not talking bad about people, but I'm saying our tendency is to try to get our soul needs met from our friends and our family. Our tendency is to try to get our, our buddies to meet our soul needs, but people are just a polluted water source, saved or unsaved. Even Jesus said, why do you call me good teacher? There's only one good, and that's my father. Are you tracking with me? The only source that will ever quench your thirst is the Holy Spirit of God. And here's what he said, Jesus himself. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers, rivers of flowing water. But he spoke this concerning the Spirit, whom knows believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. All of us, somebody say all, all of us have deep inner needs. All of us have identity issues, security issues. We have purpose issues. Those are our deepest inner soul needs, and no human being on this earth can meet any of those needs. Only God can meet those needs. But as a foolish sheep, we're always trying to get our needs met from people. And I'm saying people are wonderful. They are a blessing. But there is only a small amount of satisfaction that you can get from people. The rest of it has to come from God. And in John chapter 4, I'm going to close with this and I'll be done. Jesus goes to the woman at Samaria. And this woman's been married five times. And now she's living with a man. This woman is broken. She is devastated. She is hurt. She's an outcast in her culture. Jesus walks up and he finds her at a well one day. And he walks up and he says, give me a drink. And she looks at him. And, and she says this, you being a Jewish man, why would you ask me for a drink? But if you really go back to what she was, what she's saying, you didn't come here for water. You came here to hook up. 
because every other man in her life had only wanted her for one thing. She's broken. Why would she assume anybody wanted to put her back together? She's hurt. You don't want water. You only want one thing from me. And here's what Jesus said. He said, if you knew the gift of God who was who is talking to you right now, you would ask me for a drink and I would give it to you and you would never thirst again. And she said, I want some of that water. And he said, fine, go get your husband and come here. And she said, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, I know you got five and now you got a whatchamacallit. I'm going to preach this till the devil gets mad. You got five and the one you're living with ain't your husband. You call him Uncle Freddy so the kids don't think it's strange. But it's real strange that you and Uncle Freddy sleep in the same bed, kiss on the mouth, and do everything else that married people do. Preach it, Pastor Todd. I'm going to. She says, you got five husbands and watch them, I call it, but I want you to see this. She got five husbands, and she's shacking up. That's six. But then she met the seventh man. And I don't know what you know about the seventh number, but God's seventh number is the number of completion, the one that makes you whole. She had tried everybody else. She tried to get her needs by five different men. And she thought, he can't do it. Something's wrong with him. And he can't do it. Something's wrong with him. Everybody is just messed up. And the day he touched this woman's life, all of her soul needs got met. And she went from being broke, busted, and disgusted, from being devastated, from being lonely, to being an evangelist. And in one day, go read the story, my God. And one day, she goes back and she reaches her whole community for the kingdom of God. That's what wholeness looks like. That's what happens when you take broken people and you restore them to God's original design that he has for your life. That's what we teach in growth track. That's what we teach in freedom. That's what we teach in heart of the matter. To get you back to God's original divine so that you can go around and win as many as you can because God is coming back. We have got to get an urgency in our spirit that we become evangelists again. Pastor, that's your job. No, it's not. This is my job. He has given pastors, prophets, teachers, evangelists, what? For, the, for training, to train the saints to do the working of the ministry. This is my job. I can't go where you go. I can't be like in, in, in Dances with Wolves. I go where you go, John Dumber. Anyway, you can. Listen, there's, there's probably 400 people in this room. You're going to go places all over the city that I'm not going to go this week. What if you went with an evangelist heart and one of you reached another? We'd have 800 people here next week. That's just one. I know some of you got more than one friend. You better have more than one friend. But you got to get in touch with the right one. You got to get with the right source. The only thing, listen to me, the only thing that changed in that woman's life that day is she went from people to God. And when she got God as her source, everything in her life changed. What are you telling me, Todd? If, if you keep drinking from the well, Jesus says, if you keep drinking from men, if you want men to meet the needs in your life, and, and remember she had husband after husband after husband, she had tried to get her soul in it, and it, it just would not work. But he said, if you drink from this well, you'll never thirst again. Only God can go down to the innermost part of our soul and give us living water. Jesus, help us feel secure. Jesus, give me purpose. Jesus can give you identity. If you're trying, listen, don't get your identity from what you do. Get it from who he says you are. The pastor, being the pastor of the worship center, that's what I do. That's not who I am. Who I am is a husband to Trish, a father to to, to Hunter, and then a a, a Christian to God. If if, If I got all my love and all my source from, 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 from what I do, what would I have done during the season when the church was shut down and there was nobody in here and I was preaching? But see, I don't get my source from what I do. I get it from who I am. And who I am is who he called me to be. Oh, you're missing me. You're missing me. See, if you go by what I do, I'm just a drug addict and an ex-alcoholic. I'm just an old fornicator. I'm somebody that went to church week after week after week after week and just took advantage of the grace of God. That's who I am. But God came in one day and he said, but Todd, that's not who I made you to be. And only the person who formed me and made me in my mother's womb can really tell me what I'm called to be. You ever know, you want to know what you're called to be? Look what you do in the flesh. 
Because what you do in the flesh will be quite opposite of what God's called you to do in the spirit realm. And with my mouth, I sowed dope. And with my, wife, my mouth, I picked up women. And with my mouth, I made a living. But when I got full of the Spirit, with my mouth, I build people. With my mouth, I encourage people. With my mouth, I lift up the name of Jesus. What are you telling me? Whatever you're called and gifted to do, the devil will always manipulate it and try to ruin it for, for bad. You see what I'm saying? He took my gifting. The gifting came from God, and he took it, and he manipulated it, and he ruined it. And, and if I listened to people, I would have never got on this platform. But I chose to believe that I could be who God called me to be. And I want you to know something. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, you can be who God called you to be. You don't have to leave here thirsty today. You don't have to leave here broken. You don't have to leave here full of anxiety. You don't have to leave here full of stress. You don't have to leave here full of anger. If you'll drink from the will, you'll never thirst again. That's a promise. And I can't get... I can't promise you that, and that's good because I'd break it. But God never forgets his promises. He never forsakes us. And he has promised you, if you will drink this well, not that you wouldn't have problems, not that you wouldn't have issues, you just wouldn't have thirst. You just wouldn't have thirst. You know what that means? I got all the nourishment I need to get through my problems and through my circumstances and through my situation. As long as I depend upon him to be my shepherd, Listen to me, church. You cannot navigate your life by yourself. You cannot do it. It's got you to where you're at. And if you always do what you've always done, you'll always be where you've always been. You want to do something different today? Then you've got to step out and experience something different today. But if you go home the same way you came, you've got no one to blame for yourself because the one that can fulfill that void is not preaching to you. He is in this room, and he has been talking to your hearts all morning. And he's been telling you, what you've done is not who you are. This is who you are. And if you'll listen, close your eyes right now. Everybody in this room, just close your eyes. Begin to, what's the Holy Spirit saying to you? God, what are you saying to me today? Am I the sum total of all my mistakes? Am I the sum total of all the lies and all the things that I've done? Or am I, could it be that I could be a daughter of the King? Could it be that you could take some woman that had five husbands and shack it up and you could take my life and make it a ministry? Could it be, Lord, I'm here and I've had the abortion and everybody says that that, that was wrong and it was horrible, but could it be you could redeem that abortion? I want to tell you a thousand times, yes, God can redeem that this morning. God can redeem anything in here. But you've been told that the church looks down on it and the church does it. Listen, I'm the pastor of this church. I can't help what anybody else done. But I'm telling you, as your pastor, I don't look down on you for anything you've done. I want the best for you this morning. And here's what the best is. The best is for you to encounter a relationship with the one that you will never thirst again.